All right, what's up, guys? I'm Ed, and welcome to Guitar Space and this month's trade secret. Now, this month, we're going to talk about how I record the guitars quietly at home, or rather in my home studio, and more importantly, how to use cab sims. Cab sims are guitar cabinet simulators, and what they are is they are virtual gear. It's a software program that emulates a physical piece of hardware. And as such, they actually emulate quite a few pieces of hardware. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record um, my guitar. And um, I'm going to use a uh, two notes torpedo. Now, what this does is um, it's a stomp box, but I've also got the software on here on, the, um, on my screen. And um, we're going to talk about mic placement and how to use the cabinet simulators. Although this software is incredibly powerful, uh, I'll give you a quick preview of it. And uh, basically what I have here is I've, uh, I've been logic. Here you've got your input level. This has a very intuitive noise gate, so if you've got some hum, you know, especially if you do if, if for you guys that like the high gain stuff, all you do is click on learn. This thing learns it like that, and it sets up the threshold perfectly. Uh, the preamp stage on this, we're not going to use that. Uh, when you click on it, you can tell that it's on. That's how you can tell that it's on. Um, I'm not too crazy about that. For those of you who want to learn more about this, I actually did a review. There will be a link in uh, the description or in the article. If you're watching this on, on Guitar Space, uh, then you're watching it probably through the article, so you'll, you'll, you'll have the access to the links there. If you're watching it on YouTube, it'll be in the description. And I do a whole review on this, so I walk through each of these sections. And here, all I'm using is I'm using this, and I'm using a preamp pedal. I'm using the Vox Valve Energy Silk Drive, and it's, it's just a clean sound. That's all it is. We're playing through my uh, Stratocaster. Uh, it's a Dean Zielinski Taglier. And um, I'm in the neck position, single coil. Uh, what else can I tell you? I'm tuned down to E flat. All right, we're going to pick a cabinet, and we're going to talk about two parameters that are very important for dialing in your speaker sound. All right, that's what we're talking about. Now, what we want to do is we want to avoid using any compression or any kind of EQ, and there won't be any added in post um i have nothing on here right now this is just this is just completely dry and it's it and you'll start to hear the changes as as we begin to uh to pick things now what i like about um the torpedo is that i can pick a power amp and here so now i've got a power amp selected um and i'm just gonna go with a single ended 6l6 you can choose whether it's a pentode or triode, um, and you can adjust the volume and the depth. We're going to leave it just as is. Now, here in this section, you can pick the microphones. Now, here it's got a 421, 121 uh, ribbon. Uh, the, the 57 is probably the most standard, probably the most famous of, uh, of all mics in, in, in for, for guitar recording. And that's uh, it's an SM57. Six, seven, you've got eight mic choices. Uh, the 414 is um, one of my favorites. And we live in a wonderful age where you have access to these sounds. Yeah, they're virtual. Yes, they're not. You don't have the physical microphone, but you have access to the uh, to these uh, for a lot less than what what it would cost. Now, I went and I purchased um, these Celestian cabinets. There's the open back and a closed back 112 Celestian, the blue speaker. I like the open back because it gives me a little bit more warmth. The closed back sounds a little bit more focused. Now, what I encourage you to do is as you're selecting these things, try to focus in first on the differences. You need to condition your ears to what you're going to be listening for. 
and then you start to hear the difference, then try to put those differences into words. Because once you can start to verbalize it, you're thinking about it more, and you start to understand what it is that you like, what, what defines the sound that you like. And that is incredibly important. All right, so here you can grab the microphone and you can move it around, which is really kind of cool. But here, as you see this highlighted area, and most... Most speaker sims will, will have this. They will highlight like maybe a quarter of the or less of the area that you can adjust rather than do the whole thing because it's really to kind of break it up in, 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 into a pie. So if you think of like a pie chart, just the lower quadrant here is it's the lower quarter, but it's it's less than that. It's a um, it's not this 90 degree angle. It's more of a 45 degree angle, which is a little bit more realistic. All right, and you can adjust those by adjusting the axis or the dis and the distance. All right, so you see the microphone move when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm, I'm using both of these, and these are a little bit more accurate. You notice that when you start to drag them around, you, you, you know all these the, the, these these two buttons start going wonky, and you want to get used to the different sound that changing the position effect how it affects the sound by changing the position is better said okay so first off let's start with a 57 and you can listen to what it sounds like now you have a reference point there's, there's no uh, so let's uh let's listen to the 421 this is modeled after the sennheiser 421 Okay, to, to, to my ears, that gives it a little bit of a, like a low mid. There's a little bit more low mids in there. And it also affects the high frequency response. So it gives it a different color, a darker color. And then we go to my favorite, the, four, the 414. Okay, now this, this is a little bit unfair. Because I, I, I've owned each of these three microphones. I currently own two of them. The one that I don't own was the 421. That got stolen. Story for another time. But um, I know the 414 color and I know the 57 color. These are pretty accurate. These are pretty accurate. I prefer the 414 color. The 421, the Sennheiser 421 has a darker sound. And although I tend to lean towards the darker sounds... I don't want it in the microphone because I'm going to tweak darker and I need a little bit of a counterbalance for that. I don't want to go all the way 57 and the 414, I'm just used to that sound. I prefer that sound. Now, what I like about that sound is that it gives me, it gives me the rich mids that I like, the high frequency response and, um, and the body. The 421 gave me the body, but, uh, but at the cost of the high frequency response. And the SM57 gave me the high frequency response and the mids without the body. Now, we're splitting hairs. You know, we're very fortunate that we have, uh, we have access to this type of stuff. So we're really splitting hairs, but it's a great way to start tweaking and personalizing your sound the way that you hear it and the way that you want to hear it. And this is why I encourage you to verbalize what you're listening to. It's difficult. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult exercise. And even when you watch the YouTube videos, you hear some contradictions between the same gear and different uh, content creators. Now, I like the 414, so we're going we're gonna to stick with that. And uh, we just went through mic modelers. Now we're going to go into the mic positioning. Now, in some... In some apps, you'll find that it says axis, and in other apps, it, it will say position. Now, what this means is here is your speaker, right? Here is the center of the speaker, the cap, and then you've got the cone going all the way out to the edge. So the axis is where you put the mic as in relationship to, 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 to the center, to the cap. 
So you start moving that axis, you start moving out, and you get a little bit more cone little and, and less, less of the cap. When you get to the edge, you don't get any cap, and now you've got all, all speaker cone and more edge. As you get to the center, it sounds brighter. As you get to the edge, it starts, it's, you start to lose a little bit of that brightness. Now, some people very much like that. I don't like being right on top of the cone, but I do like being very close to it because I want the clarity. You'll start to lose a little bit of clarity. All right, so let's listen to it. Okay, there it is, closed mic, right in the center. Let's move it all the way back. Sounds bassier, right? We're also losing a little bit of the clarity. Go back to, to the center. And all the way out. Okay, now let's go push this at 12 o'clock and we'll go, we'll go right, we'll try to get the best of both worlds. Okay, I like that better because I'm getting a little bit more, more warmth than, um, than bead right on top of the cap. But what I actually, I want to lean a little bit in the middle and let's, let's kind of split the difference. Because I do notice as I get further away from the center, I am sacrificing a little bit of, 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 of the presence really. Now, I can always tweak that back in, but here is a trick to getting a, a nice full guitar sound when you record, As also in virtual and analog. This is what, 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 you, what, you, what you would do, is um, you don't want to add EQ or compression at this stage. You don't want to add it until after you've recorded. You can do it just by tweaking, physically tweaking the amp. So if this was a, a, a real amp, and a real mic, an engineer would move it, would physically move it and adjust the distance. After a while, they start to learn the room and go, you know, the amp goes here and the mic goes here. And you start to learn your gear and you start to learn where the sweet spots are. At the beginning, you have to play with it a little bit. You got to condition to eat your ears so that you can hear where the differences are. And then you have to go through the learning process of how to make the gear uh, how to make the program uh, respond to the things that, they, that, that you're hearing. And uh, that's why I, I love these graphics because it's, this is physically what you, would do in, what you would do in the room. The amp, as you notice, is in the middle of the room. It's not all the way up against the wall, which is sometimes how many people will record. You know, or, or they'll stick an amp in a corner. And an amp in a corner, you start to get all kinds of these uh, little anomalies cut because... It, Sound waves are bouncing off of the corner and then they're, they're canceling each other out or they're phasing each other. You get all kinds of not crazy nonsense. Um, all right, so we, here, that's the access. All right, and now let's do the distance. What here, what we want to listen for here is that you're going to get a little bit of the room sound in there. So as you move the mic from, this is a speaker, this is a microphone, as you move it from close miking, which is what we were just doing, to ambient miking, which is putting a little bit of air between the microphone and the speaker. You start to get some of the room sound, which starts to add a little bit of, of depth, a little bit of warmth. You want to hear a great example of that? Listen to John Mayall and the Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton. 1966, Eric Clapton recorded with the ampli amplifier was in the room with the other instruments. It bled into all the mics, so you get this rich, roomy sound that probably drove the engineers nuts. But, uh... Defined rock and roll. <laughs> All right, so here, let's work on distance. Let's move it all the way back. Can you hear the air in the room? Listen. Now let's move up close. Now I'm going to let the cord ring out. I'm going to move the mic.
you know, it sucks when you're using a pick and the mouse at the same time because it's a, I just had a that little issue. Let's try that again. I'm going to move the mic <laughs> as I hold the cord. All right, there you go. So you can, you can hear that. You can hear the difference in that. Now, I don't want to go all the way out. I want to give it a little bit of ambience. I don't want too much. Now, I would spend some time tweaking this. Now, I've, I've used this app for a while. So, you know, my starting point is kind of 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You know, uh, right around 15%, 15% on, on each of these. All right, so you understand the concept there. The other thing that I would do is I could also, I could add another mic, and sometimes I like to just mic the back. And I will lower that in the mix. And, uh, and here, you see how it's reflected in the graphics. Now, this is the back of the mic. This is the back of the, um, back of the amp. Um, but I would prefer an open back for th for this. We're gonna we're gonna hear a difference immediately because of that. I will get a little closer. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to the to the magnet. And we will change this to the 57. Maybe we can get a little bit more of a brighter sound in there. Now here, the, we've been doing all of this dry. We can add a little bit of reverb. And, and, and here, you could, you, you could also play with the reverb, play with the EQ, and dial in your personalized speaker tone. You can do all of this stuff before you've actually recorded. Now, I've done that, and I've saved it on some of my other uh, presets. So let me go to, uh, to one of those. You'll see up here that this is going to change, and uh, you get uh, the Ed Copper 412. All right, that's what came in. And, and what you notice here is this is this is what I, I set up. I used uh, the single den EL34. That's what I liked. Lowered the volume a little bit and, and moved uh, the depth up. Um, I used a ribbon mic and a different ribbon mic on the back. So the ribbon mic on the front. You see, I'm pretty much on access on the go. Okay, so I'm pretty close close to, 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 to being on access because here you see it's a 412. So it's in the, so it's spiking this lower the lower speaker. Right, and let's go to us. Uh, and here you'll see that I, I, I use different mics. I, 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 pick, I picked a different power amp um, modeler. And um, what I found is that by tweaking it like this, I can personalize it to the way that I like it. Now, I generally try to do this without, because my eyes will deceive me, you know. It's, it's like, it, it, it's, and here's, here's the funny thing. I didn't think that the, uh, but the Celestian coppers, I've used the physical coppers, and I didn't, I didn't particularly like them. I preferred the greenbacks and, uh, and the vintage 30s. Those were my favorite physical Celestian speaker cabinets. And then I discovered that I actually, I really like the blue and the ruby. The ruby, I need to massage a little bit. But I like the blue sound for cleaner styles, for like soul, R&B, um, that type of stuff for some blues. And when I start to go into the classic rock range, you know, the, uh, I, I like the coppers and I've always liked the greenbacks, you know, but I I've, I've discovered all this by doing exercises like this. All right. I want to thank you for tuning in. Thanks for hanging with me. I really appreciate, uh, you taking the time to watch this. Let me know how it goes for you in the comments below. All right. I'll see you next time.